science with deterministic mathematical laws, the processes of life seemed aptly framed within the mechanistic paradigm. Animals and plants were machines, okay. as were humans, okay. and ultimately, so too was the universe, the outworking of inert, immutable, and purposeless natural law. And while the self became an ever more peripheral bystander on the cosmic stage, the mechanistic view continued to justify itself as associated with extraordinary advancements in anatomy, medicine, cosmology, and technology, as well as providing a rational stability to the worldview of secular culture. The shift in consciousness initiated by the rise of science can be framed through what is sometimes termed the Copernican Revolution. When humanity learned that it was not the physical center of the universe, this discovery challenged not only sacred scripture, but also our sense that we, or life, holds any significance on the cosmic stage. The Copernican Revolution describes an intellectual movement in which scientists and philosophers vowed to themselves never again to be deluded into notions of human significance. The consolation was a sense of empowerment and release from the stifling moral dogma of the church. Scientific knowledge was a power that could be wielded over nature, and with it we could transform the world to serve our own ends. Instead of its victims, we could be masters over nature. We could build our own heaven here on earth. This was a view championed by the English philosopher and statesman Francis Bacon and captured in his famous aphorism, knowledge is power. Many contemporary thinkers observe that the mechanistic materialist frame has deeply shaped the worldview and values of the modern mind. While science and its mechanistic materialist understanding liberated the modern mind from the oppressive doctrine of the church, the new frame emerging from the scientific revolution, while amazing and humbling in its reach and power, profoundly decentralized the human mind, its meanings, values, and goals. Several contemporary scholars have argued that apprehension of this reality, apparently devoid of mind and meaning, has contributed to a shared sense of isolation, meaninglessness, and separation from nature, from other beings, and from the larger universe. But does the machine metaphor of the universe really provide the most accurate appraisal of the true nature of things? Is reductive materialism the only rationally defensible interpretation of our scientific discoveries? As we will now explore, in a little over a century, the machine metaphor has faced a series of unexpected and unprecedented challenges which have led to the empowering of an Oscar. alternative perspective that given the same Oscar. empirical scientific evidence a more powerful and explanatory metaphor for our universe is that of an organism a greater reality in the early 20th century while working by day as a pattern clerk the physicist albert einstein began developing a theory which would eventually convince the academic world that space and time are not fundamental features of reality, as had long been assumed, but are in fact generated out of a deeper underlying order. The universe is not simply a place or a container in which things happen, it's rather a developing system. During the same period, the emerging field of quantum mechanics went on to describe a deeply interconnected reality within which no single part could be truly abstracted from the whole and in which every particle is potentially interconnected with every other particle in the universe. 
through Einstein's discovery that light travels at an astonishing though finite speed, we realize that our most distant observations reveal the universe at its most ancient. The light from distant galaxies captured them as they had existed when the light was first emitted billions of years ago. As we gazed out into the vast cosmos, we realized that we are in fact also gazing through time. Both Einstein's relativity and the emerging physics of the quantum came as a surprise to then senior physicists of the early 20th century, many of whom believed that physics was approaching completion as an exhaustive description of nature. And yet coming discoveries of the next 100 years would begin to intimate a much deeper and more mysterious reality. For the early scientific forerunners, such as Kepler and Newton, the Earth, Sun, Moon and planets comprised the entire universe. Few took seriously the possibility that the stars, those mysterious points of light moving together across the night sky, could in fact be other suns. The most sophisticated cosmology was primarily concerned with modeling the predictable movements of the observable celestial bodies. Theories were demonstrated through the literal use of clockwork models with pirouetting planets encircling first a central earth and then later amended to a central sun. Earlier models of the universe were attempts to grasp an apparently timeless reality in which the celestial bodies moved eternally and unchanging. Today, however, cosmologists understand themselves as inhabiting a very different universe, a universe which has undergone a long developmental evolution prior to arriving at its current state. And while Newton's classical physics of a deterministic causal matrix remains highly critical for many purposes, its grounding machine metaphor hardly seems to fit our understanding of the developing universe, nor does it correspond with our deepest observations of it. The new cosmological picture is decidedly evolutionary. Understanding how the universe came to assume its current state is no longer a matter of explaining a timeless order, but a developmental story, within which the greatest climax of novelty and complexity is unmistakably the emergence of life and mind. Life and Consciousness Is there life beyond Earth? There are now believed to be 20 billion or so Earth-like planets in the Milky Way galaxy. Places where the primordial conditions Bobby. necessary for life on Earth Bobby. may exist. Interestingly, there is evidence of single-celled life on Earth virtually as soon as the right conditions were present. It's not clear if this is a sign that life is common throughout the universe, but if that is the case, it's also true that single-celled life existed for an exceedingly long time, billions of years, before the first multicellular organisms emerged. There's a very long and uncertain road between single-celled slimes and relatively intelligent life, such as us. But of course, the universe is also a fantastically large place. Keep in mind that while our galaxy could contain these 20 billion Earth-like planets, it is just one galaxy among trillions. Nobody can truly grasp these numbers, but it seems implausible, though not impossible, that intelligent life is so fantastically rare that it only happened once. This seems out of keeping with the rest of what we know about cosmological phenomena. But whether or not conscious life has arisen billions of times, or just once, its presence on the cosmic stage is revealing of a reality capable of supporting its existence. Subtle enough, deep enough, to carry value, meaning, and significance. With consciousness 
becomes the very possibility of significance itself. It is an extraordinary fact about reality that it supports the existence of consciousness. The mechanistic view, with its materialism philosophy, neither predicts nor has an explanation for consciousness. The possibility of subjective experience discloses a depth to reality that the outwardly viewing mechanistic paradigm cannot meaningfully articulate. By the latter decades of the 20th century, philosophical materialism had lost significant stock in both the science and philosophy of mind. The materialist view did not seem capable of incorporating the extraordinary fact that certain arrangements of matter are subjects of conscious experience. This became known as the hard problem of consciousness. The philosopher David Chalmers, who famously coined this term, offered a radical alternative to the alien mechanistic materialist approach to explaining consciousness. Chalmers emphasized an assertion previously attributed to René Descartes three centuries earlier, that consciousness possesses an undeniable and immediate reality which cannot be doubted. Descartes' famous, I think therefore I am, is today updated to, I have consciousness, therefore I exist. Maybe. For Chalmers and a growing number of philosophers and scientists, Maybe. the irreducible reality of consciousness must be preserved in any account of the universe that aspires to completeness. What is vitally missing from our understanding of brains, argues Chalmers, may also be missing from our basic description of the world. Discussion in this area often centers on the so-called intrinsic nature of reality, which has long been a mystery in science. We simply do not know, as the physicist Stephen Hawking once put it, what it is that breathes fire into the equations of physics and gives reality to the world. So what does this have to do with consciousness? In recent times, a constellation of philosophers have argued that the exclusively outward-facing description of the world provided by physics both implies and requires an interior landscape, an intrinsic ground to which the equations of physics point. Developing on ideas first put forward by Bertrand Russell and Arthur Eddington in the early 20th century, a new generation of philosophers and scientists argue that the intrinsic nature of matter may also be the essential nature of consciousness. As the philosopher Thomas Nagel has put it, quote, we ourselves are large-scale complex instances of something both objectively physical from outside and subjectively mental from inside. Perhaps the basis of this identity pervades the world, end quote. Far from there being no space for consciousness at the foundations of reality, for these thinkers, physics seems to require something very much like consciousness in order to be complete. Recent years have seen a new flowering of such thinking, which in the philosophical literature is known as panpsychism. But whether or not panpsychism is true, it is an example of an alternative frame on the same scientifically revealed universe. While the mechanistic materialist paradigm has been the default lens of science, it is now becoming recognized as containing underlying and often unexamined assumptions about reality and other plausible metaphysical frames, including panpsychism, exist to be explored. One thing is certain, the universe is unmistakably a very different place due to its supporting the existence of consciousness. And while the last 300 years of empirical science has systematically factored out subjective experience, truly confronting the reality of consciousness 
unavoidably reframes our cosmological picture and should inform our considerations about the basic character of the universe. We will return to consciousness, but for now, let's move on to intelligence. Intelligence. The relative intelligibility of the universe by human minds has been viewed as a deep mystery by scientists including Einstein. Our brains evolved to much of their current cognitive capacities when we lived as hunter-gatherers. And yet it turns out that such brains are also capable of understanding highly abstract concepts in mathematics and theoretical physics. How humans acquired their capacities for abstract and rational thought is a matter of ongoing debate it has certainly not been bestowed upon all sentient life. We should of course acknowledge the significant displays of intelligence in other species, notably in other primates, as well as dogs, birds, octopuses, dolphins and whales. Intelligence, like consciousness, is a striking feature of life, the existence of which may in fact hold wider implications to cosmology. In recent years, several scholars have considered that the ongoing evolution of intelligence could actually play a role in the long-term development of the universe. As the Princeton physicist Freeman Dyson has written, quote, It is conceivable that life may have a larger role to play than we have yet imagined. Life may succeed against all of the odds in moulding the universe to its own purposes and the design of the inanimate universe may not be as detached from the potentialities of life and intelligence as scientists of the 20th century have tended to suppose." End quote. In a similar vein, the futurist and inventor Raymond Kurzweil, known for his predictions about the coming technological singularity, has argued that today's cosmologists largely underappreciate the fantastic potential of life, and specifically intelligence, to eventually shape the entire universe. Quote, Intelligence is very powerful. It is the most powerful force that we are aware of. Intelligence can overcome supposed natural limits, not through any kind of magic, but just by figuring ways to manipulate forces at finer and finer scales, so that ultimately, what seem to be natural limits can be superseded. It won't take us that long for us to do this at a solar system scale, and then a galaxy-wide scale. Ultimately, we will turn the universe into a large mind that is trillions and trillions of times greater than all of human intelligence today." End quote. Perhaps a pervasive cosmic intelligence developing over billions of years 